Hey everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and you're listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by littleshaman.org. That's me, the little shaman. Today I wanted to talk to you about something I think is really important, and that is the red flags that come up when we first enter into a relationship with a narcissist. Too often people ignore these red flags. They go against their better judgment and overlook things, believing the narcissist's explanations and assuming that they themselves are simply jumping at shadows that aren't there. Most people will acknowledge that they knew something was wrong with the relationship and the person relatively quickly, usually within the first month or so that they were with them. It might not be something that seems like a huge deal at the time, but it set warning bells off. Those warning bells exist for a reason. They're trying to tell you that something's wrong and they should not be ignored. You can call it God, you can call it psychic impression, you can call it intuition or instinct or your gut, you can call it whatever you want, but it all comes down to the same thing. Something is trying to tell you that there's a problem. Something is not right about this situation or this person. Humans have become divorced from their instincts in many ways, and a lot of times people will argue themselves out of their feelings. They'll say things like, oh, I'm just being silly, or there's really no problem here, and and things like that. This can be dangerous. Those instincts exist for a reason. They have a very important purpose, and that purpose is to warn you when you're in danger. That's one of the things that the police will tell women whenever they give safety and self-defense courses. Listen to your instincts. If you feel that the guy sitting next to you at the bar is weird, then he probably is weird, so just stay away from him. Ted Bundy was thought of as a very good-looking man. He was very charming, he was funny, and he had a very smooth, superficial personality. A lot of women fell victim to him because of that, but there were also many women that he approached in bars and in parks and different places who said, yes, he was very good looking and yes, he was very nice, but there was just something about him that I didn't like. Those women are probably alive today because they listen to their instincts. And it's not just women, it's men too. Everyone has these instincts. Narcissists can be any gender, any race, any ethnicity, any sexual orientation, any age. It truly is an equal opportunity disorder. You cannot spot a narcissist based on what they look like. It's not possible. You have to listen to that little voice in your head that's trying to tell you that something's wrong here. Another thing we often see is that people will try to warn someone about their partner and the person does not listen. That's understandable because, especially when we're first infatuated with somebody, we don't want to believe anything bad about them and no one is more charming and amazing than a narcissist on their best behavior. Sometimes we're so used to dealing with the bad behavior of the narcissist that we can forget that. When I did the interview with the narcissist series, a few people commented on the childhood portion of those interviews that the subject, Joe, didn't seem evil enough to be a narcissist and I had to remind people that narcissists do not behave terribly all the time, especially in public. If they were evil all the time and abusive all the time, they would never get anybody to stick around. It's important not to forget that, that way we don't find ourselves in a relationship with yet another narcissist after we get rid of the first one. This can become a cycle that people get stuck in over and over again, so it's really important to remember that. It's very easy for narcissists to come across as sympathetic, particularly when they're talking about how badly they've been mistreated. Everyone has sympathy for a person describing an abusive childhood and I personally do believe that Joe's stories of the childhood abuse he suffered are mostly true. But these things are probably why no one made similar comments on the relationship portion of the videos where the subject was talking about how he's abusive to his wife. To me it was actually a little surprising that the people who watch my videos, many of whom seem really knowledgeable about narcissists, would actually fall for that. But I guess it really speaks to the manipulative power of these personalities. That's one of the reasons I chose Joe for the interview. He's a covert narcissist and does not come across as a narcissist at first. Now there's an old saying, if more than three people tell you that you're a horse, you should go get fitted for a saddle. This means that if multiple people are saying the same thing about somebody, it might be true. So if multiple people are telling you the same things about your partner, and if you're dealing with a narcissist, that will probably be the case, it might be time to at least consider 
the possibility that these things could be true. It's always possible that people can have vindictive exes and your new partner's ex could even be a narcissist. But you'll know if the things they're saying are true because you will have seen these things for yourself. For example, if they say that your partner is an alcoholic and a drug addict, you'll probably have already seen evidence that your partner does drink and that they do take drugs or that they don't. If they're saying that your partner is abusive, you'll probably already have seen evidence that they become frustrated easily or overreact to small things or that they have a bad temper. These are not things that people can hide for very long. People, not just narcissists, but all people will tell you who they really are. It never fails. And when they do, you should believe them. One of the greatest sources of pain in all of our relationships, and again, not just with narcissists, but in general, is the disappointment and the betrayal we feel when we find out that somebody is not who we thought they were. This is often not even because someone has misrepresented themselves, but because we didn't want to believe them when they showed us who they really were. Don't make that mistake. When someone shows you who they really are, believe them. Now, narcissists in particular often misrepresent themselves purposely, but they also tell on themselves. So pay attention. Because if you're being totally honest with yourself and about the situation, you're not going to be able to miss it. Now, because this is a video about red flags, I will give a few because I know some of you listening are probably waiting for them. The truth is, though, if you've come on YouTube looking for red flags about whether you're dealing with a narcissist or not, you probably already know if you are or not because you wouldn't have those suspicions about a, quote, normal person. But a few red flags that you're dealing with a narcissist would be if they come on really strong if they claim to have really strong feelings for you in a very short period of time. This is called love bombing and it's exactly what it sounds like. The target is literally bombarded with love. This is done so that the narcissist can get really close to you really quickly and get inside your head to bind you to them really quickly. These are the people that are saying they love you after a, a short period of time, like a month or two months, who say they can't live without you and that you're their dream come true and you're their soulmate and all these things when you barely know them. This can be very exciting, but it should be a huge red flag. Normal people generally do not develop feelings for somebody that fast. These feelings often feel genuine to the victim and they seem genuine coming from the narcissist. It is true that the narcissist is intoxicated and excited, but they are intoxicated and excited by the chase and the idea of conquest, not by the victim themselves. This is a really important distinction to make. When the chase is over and the conquest is complete, the victim themselves is usually not enough to hold the narcissist's attention. The narcissist will often cool off very quickly, even to the point of becoming bored. Now that does not always happen, but it does happen a lot. With covert narcissists, sometimes that will go a little differently. They become obsessed with people and they are the type who often will turn into stalkers. But again, narcissists are just like everybody else. They're people too and underneath of their disorder, they do have a personality so it's not one size fits all. Another red flag would be if every single relationship this person has ever been in was an unfair situation where they were treated badly for no reason. They might say all their exes are psychos or whores or liars or cheaters or drug abusers. They often report that they don't know why their relationships ended, which should be a huge red flag in and of itself. These people have never done anything wrong. They're always the victim. There's no person on the planet who has a history like that. We're all fallible human beings, we all have flaws, and we all make mistakes and do things wrong. A person who claims that they were never to blame in any situation or that they're continuously abused just for no reason should be viewed extremely suspiciously. If you find yourself feeling sorry for a poor little victim who no one has ever cared about, you need to be very, very wary about that. In 99% of situations, most adults have brought that kind of disdain onto themselves. Other red flags would be things like stories that don't match up, being repeatedly caught in lies, even small lies or stupid lies about dumb things, making comments that seem odd or that are inappropriate, not seeming to understand that they're being rude or out of line, 
anger that is not proportionate to the situation. There's lots of them, and I've done a few videos on these, which will be linked at the end of this video. The most important thing, though, is to remember that that little warning system exists in your brain and in your gut for a reason. There are lots and lots of videos and, and articles about red flags and warning signs and lists and all these things. And I've even done a few myself. But the truth is, you know when something's wrong. You know when you're dealing with somebody who is just not right. And of all the things we can say about narcissists, the most truthful thing we can say about them is they are definitely not right. I hope that cleared a few things up for you. As always, I look forward to your comments, stories, and suggestions. So go ahead and feel free to post those. I want to thank everybody who has contributed to our GoFundMe campaign. As you may or may not know, a tornado destroyed our home in April of this year, and it completely destroyed our cabin as well as basically every single thing we own. Both of our children were injured in the tornado, and we are still trying to rebuild our lives. You may or may not know how long it takes to come back from a disaster. It takes a really, really long time. And speaking of disasters, I want to give my sympathy to all the people affected by Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Harvey. We were actually affected by Hurricane Irma. Um, luckily, it was not as bad here in middle Georgia as they thought it was going to be. But my prayers and sympathies go out to all the people affected because I definitely understand what that's like. If you can help out some of those people, they are going to need it. So please, please find it in your heart to do so. You've been listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by littleshaman.org. That's me, the Little Shaman. May the Great Spirit bless you and have a wonderful day.